Okay, as we look at uh, the auction market, uh, there's a few positive factors and negative factors that have been, been influencing. I think everybody's here well aware of commodity prices and higher net farm income of 2021, uh, but really analyzing what that has done to the used equipment market, I, I think is something that uh, needs to be um, uh, dove into. And so as you look at those positive factors, really high net farm income, higher, higher than expected yields are driving demand. Um, and as we all know, dealer lots are pretty empty. So from a, uh, from a supply standpoint, it's, it's hard to find what we want in the market. In, in December, we saw equipment values skyrocketing because of people trying to buy that piece because they, know, or they knew they had uh, high income and they're leveraging bonus depreciation at the end of the year. Um, and, you know, if I was to give this presentation in December, I probably wouldn't have been talking about the, the bullish commodity markets that we're in right now. But as we go into 2022, we're starting to see uh, that demand continue to pick up and, and prices continuing to rise. Uh, negative factors, I, I know it's hard to get over high, uh, high fertilizer prices and what's going on on the farm. But there's a couple of other interesting uh, market dynamics that, that we're really recognizing. And uh, it, it goes along with the, the, the lack of supply that you see at dealer lots and, and maybe you're having a hard time getting parts uh, because of those same supply chain issues. And so what we've seen is uh, we kind of refer it to, if you remember in the beginning of COVID, the, the, the toilet paper uh, pandemic, right? Everybody's running out of toilet paper. Same, same kind of market dynamics in the equipment world. Once you realized that you needed a part and it was hard to get, you said, oh man, it, it, you know, it took three weeks to get that part. I better buy four of them. Uh, or if you're afraid that your planter is going to go down, tractor is going to go down, combine during the middle of uh, infield application or harvest, that you sat, some farmer sat back and said, I better just buy another one because it had high net farm income. And so what we've seen is asset accumulation, not the normal trade cycles at the dealers, which uh, uh, deplete all of the inventory in the market. So all that inventory is sitting on farm today. Okay, this is a snapshot across multiple different asset categories within the auction market. Uh, and this is the, December, the biggest auction season is the month of December, as we all know. So this is really looking at December 2020 versus December 2021 at all of the various uh, categories that you can see in the bottom. So compact tractors, utility tractors, row crop, four-wheel drive, planters, sprayers, and combines. Um, and, and, I, and this is a really interesting chart for us to look at as, as people that analyze data and start to look at, okay, what is the supply at auction? And then how has that affected the demand or the pricing? Um, as you can see, compact, uh, it, it's really been driven by people living at home and wanting that 39 horsepower tractor for their hobby farm, uh, right? But there's been a ton of supply coming to the market, uniquely enough, and, and prices continue to rise even though there is all that supply. As you start to look uh, over at row crop tractors and four-wheel drives. Um, that supply is actually down in the month of December. It did come back, which I'll show in, in, a, in a little bit. Uh, and, and prices continue to rise there. I think a few key takeaways that we see out of this, something that's very interesting are, are sprayers. Um, throughout, throughout 2021, uh, what we recognize is there was a lot of supply of sprayers and then high net farm income was approaching on us. We saw a lot of farmers buy a, a, a lot of sprayers. And the reason we believe that they're buying a lot of sprayers is because uh, it's kind of a nice to have piece of equipment versus a need to have. We can always have the co-op go spray for $6 an acre, right? But if you have it and you can ap apply timely, now that we're going over fields uh, many more times using sprayers, people are finding the opportunity of, of being able to buy that today. So in the third, second and third quarter of 2021, that, that inventory was starting to be depleted. Um, and, and similar scenarios with combines. So combines are down 47% uh, from an inventory standpoint in December, and prices were up 30%. So here's a graph that you'll see over the next few slides, and uh, I wanna por point out the format here quickly. Uh, the top graph that you're looking at is auction values uh, month over month as it's growing, and then the bottom is the supply at the market. And so if you really look at the supply graph on the bottom, this is 2021 and 20, excuse me, 2020 and 2021, um, you start to look at the seasonality. We all know in auction, March, August, December, the biggest time periods, right? So I really encourage you to look at those time periods and those peaks from the inventory levels 
and then comparing that to the price on the top. Um, and, and that's when a lot of the really high quality good inventory sells. And so those are the months that we really need to pay attention to. It's hard to look at the market when everybody's in the field in April, May, uh, or October, November, because there's just not a lot of inventory uh, trading during those times. So some, some takeaways that we see here, uh, and this is, this is over, overall uh, more of late model equipment, uh, combines, tractors, and sprayers um, at, at auction. So what we've seen uh, from, a, from a supply standpoint is, is a reduction of supply in these asset categories by 21%. Uh, uniquely enough, those prices are up 33% in the month of December. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about are tractors. Um, as we look at the volume throughout 2021 um, in Q1, 2, and 3, what we saw was a reduction in supply. And you can clearly see 55% uh, less tractors went to auction in August of 21. And that, has, that obviously affected the prices of what you see there. Uh, in December, though, this is completely different than any other category out there. There were a lot of tractors that were sold at auction in December. A lot of big consignments still brought that inventory, and those prices were up 35%. As we go into, uh, if you can see the very purple dot on the very far uh, left-hand side, the beginning of that orange chart, the, that price is right in line with where it was last year, um, which you'll see in the other categories is not the same. Um, because of all that supply came to the market in December, what we believe is a lot of farmers were able to get their bellies full of the, the products that they needed uh, at auction. And going into the first part of this year, um, those prices are holding steady from where they were last year. If you look at dealer prices, the average dealer price of a row crop tractor uh, is, has gone up in price, listed value, by almost 4% in the last 30 days. So there still continued to be momentum at the, the dealer listing price. So what was listed for $100,000 in December is now listed for $104,000, right? And so we're gonna continue to see that climb. Um, and, and something uh, interesting from, uh, from maybe the dealer's perspective uh, or from the overall tractor, uh, tractor and combine market, uh, anything self-propelled really, is uh, you know, this, the CEO of Case IH, CNH Industrial came out last week, I think, uh, on CNBC and said in 2022, they continue to see protracted uh, equipment supplies. They're still having issues getting chips and they still believe that supply will be a big issue uh, going into 2022. So that's one of the reasons that we think that dealers are recognizing that that's being communicated to the dealers. And so dealers know from a reduction of supply that they can continue to increase those price levels. And with now higher net farm income as we look into 2022, uh, people are still gonna be willing to pay that. Not to mention that inflation has not stopped. Okay, so that was 175, the previous slide was 175 horse to 300 horse tractors. This is 300 horse tractors and above. This is the, this is the category of tractors that we're seeing a lot of growth and momentum in right now. Uh, big demand for big horsepower right now, especially that low hour late model. Uh, and, and those prices are up nearly 6% in the last 30 days. And, and that continues to climb. Very low supply uh, in, in the market today for, horsepower, for high horsepower tractors. Uh, okay, and we're gonna go into combine trends. This is much different than the tractor market, almost flip-flopped. There was uh, tractors, there was a lack of supply, Q1, Q2, Q3, and then all the supply came back in Q4 last year. As we look into the combine market, you can clearly see plenty of supply, Q1, Q3 last year, and then all of a sudden it dropped off. Um, dealers, dealers had plenty of combines last year and then all of a sudden in Q4, uh, farmers started buying uh, a lot of them. Again, high net farmer income was a big driver there uh, and it was need to get the crops out timely um, uh, throughout last year. In December, we saw, uh, in December, we saw a lot less combines come to market and that, that flip-flopped the price market. And so combines are up uh, year over year 36%. Uh, from a use standpoint. In all of 2021, there's 31% less combines that came to market, um, which, is, which is a significant amount when people uh, are, are demanding those, those assets. Even though uh, this is something that I, I, I think should be a good takeaway for people in here, especially if you're in the, in the market to buy a combine, uh, we saw big growth just a moment ago in the tractor sectors, uh, kind of month over month from dealer listing price. 
in December and Q4 last year, big buying season for combines, prices were up dramatically, more so than tractors, yet dealer prices have not responded to that yet. Um, and, and a big saying in the dealer market is a trend. Uh, let, let's say a couple of combines sell at auction one month and, and the prices are, are a little bit higher. Okay, that might be an anomaly from an auction, right? There might be some competitive bidding. In month two, it could be a trend that is starting to develop and need to pay attention. And if that happens again in month three, it is a current market trend and you have to pay attention to it. So this is something that um, I would encourage you all to look at. We just saw Q3, excuse me, Q4 uh, explode in combine prices and the supply was dramatically reduced. Here at the dealer level, we're not seeing that yet. So that could start to take effect going into Q1 and Q2 of, of 2022. Sprayers. Similar supply throughout the year. And then uh, again in Q4, I think people started to recognize uh, a reduced supply and people were paying premiums for them to the, to the tune of 40% year over year uh, increase in, in sprayer prices. Um, and as we start to look at that, uh, that momentum going into 2022, that very purple dot, those are, those are the, the sprayers that sold at auction in January. Again, we're starting to see that, that growth continue year over year. That, that purple line is 20, or that blue line is 2020. Then you see the prices in January of 2021, and now we're starting to see them in 2022. So you can see that continued elevation in price increases. Uh, and if, again, we're not gonna have supply. OEMs can't turn the spigot on. We think that we'll continue to see that, that uh, continue this year. Again, what we saw in the combines is holding true with sprayers. The sprayers at dealer lots are not moving in price. So I, I would be uh, really looking at that if you're in the market to buy a sprayer, uh, watching where those prices go over the next couple of months. We would suspect that dealers will start to respond to the auction market and reduce supply and start elevating prices. Now we'll dive into some planners. And we like to look at planners a little bit differently. The seasonality of planners is, is different than tractors, combines, uh, and sprayers. And <laughs> this is the only asset category that had more supply in, in December and Q, Q4 uh, year over year. We, we saw a 30% increase in supply of planners um, and prices were up 17%. So it's not that 35% you saw in sprayers and tractors. Um, a little bit less, and again, it goes back to a supply and demand marketplace. Uh, what's, what's interesting, and I'll show you later, um, is the, uh, a lot of dealers are worried about late planter deliveries. So if, if you are in the market to buy or sell a planter, um, towards the end of the presentation, I'll dive into kind of what's coming next year and, and uh, why some of those planters might be delivered late this year. So I think kind of on par, what we're seeing in the dealer market is there's not a lot of growth from uh, planter prices at, at dealer lots. They're actually down 2.7%. Uh, this is what we believe uh, is a lot of farmers now with higher net farm income are demanding high-speed planters, uh, max emerge planters, right? And so what we're seeing is a lot of those are coming off the market and they're not being replaced yet because that big planter supply is supposed to come now in most years but it hasn't hit the market. Uh, you know, John Deere was obviously sold out of their planners last June when everybody ordered them, uh, and those just haven't started hitting the lots, so there's nothing new necessarily out there. About a month ago, we partnered with uh, DTN, Progressive Farmer, to understand in, the, in today's economic climate, what are people doing from an equipment financing standpoint? And so here are some survey results from uh, 158 farmers that, that came from DTN and, and how they're looking at the market, what they're anticipating uh, financing equipment going forward. So uh, the, the question here is, when you buy your next piece of equipment, are you gonna plan to finance it? And roughly 73% are going to be financing their equipment uh, when they plan to purchase over the next uh, year and a half to two years. And uh, as you can see, a lot of those people are planning on buying in the next six months to a year. Uh, which isn't shocking, but um, we actually thought it would be a little bit higher than that because, because of the lack of supply, we anticipated farmers uh, being in the market more, but we, we may have been wrong on that prediction simply from the fact that uh, there, there isn't enough supply in the market and people aren't willing to pay these prices. 
And, and here's where farmers finance equipment. Uh, throughout all of these surveys, they're, they're, uh, farmers were asked to select all uh, places where you finance. And as you see, local bank is continuing to, uh, to be the majority leader here. Um, and, and then the OEM. So a lot of deals and transactions happen at dealers. And uh, that's where a lot of people are, are financing their equipment. Uh, another interesting fact that we found are the, the average farmer in this survey um, uses roughly two banks to finance their equipment. It's not always, there's not always one. So uh, as we show lenders this actually, it's, it starts to really come down to uh, what we see in, in, in this slide, which is what are the most important factors when it comes to financing equipment? And by and large, number one is interest rate. And then second to that is uh, ease of application. So we're seeing a big trend of how can farmers find the, the, the lowest interest rate the fa as fast as they can. And one of those driving factors is the, the lack of supply. If you find a piece you want, you kind of need to do a deal now. And getting that done really quickly is, uh, is a big benefit. OK, so as we look into where we think uh, equipment expectations are, are going to be in 2022, um, there's, a, there's a lot of bigger factors that are at play here. Number one is the lack of new supply. So if you recall back in 2012, 13, when we had high commodity prices, everybody wanted to buy new paint. OEMs were able to turn on the spigot. I, I, I think if, if, if I remember correctly, uh, the number of combines produced went up uh, almost 100% in 2013 that you know, OEMs are able to bring to the market. Today, they, they can't do that. Supply is going to continue to go down. Uh, they have ongoing chip shortages and, and other delays. Um, <laughs> planner deliveries will be late this year. 70% of dealers are estimating planners will either be late to spring planting for 2022 or not even show up for planting. So that's going to throw a wrench into how people are thinking about uh, well, number one, I wouldn't get, if you're trading one in, I wouldn't get rid of the one you have now. Uh, and, and number two is, what is that going to look like from a financing standpoint? You might be stuck in, if you get a planner in June, when's your payment going to start? You're going to have lump sum 18 month payment due uh, in December next year, or, or how is that going to play out from a cash flow perspective? Uh, and then lastly, because of these, these market trends that we're seeing, supply, demand, if you're used to buying, a, say, a two-year-old machine, two-year-old tractor, 300 hours a year, that you're used to buying uh, at 600 hours, that is now going to be 750 to 850 hours. So those, those machines are going to continue to get older. Um, so it's going to disrupt your typical trade cycle uh, on uh, uh, likely when items need to be serviced and repaired. So be, you know, think about that as you go back to the market looking at used that users are gonna to continue to get older because there's not enough demand for new, or there's not enough supply at new. So what we, what we believe in all of those price trends we just showed you, we continue to be pretty bullish on the used equipment market, and we think prices will continue to rise here in 2022. TractorZoom is changing the way the industry researches, evaluates, and manages the purchase of farm equipment.